Hi, and welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. Uh, one of the followers on the channel said that his um, 2007 ISX doesn't want to start below 50 degrees Fahrenheit unless he has the, the block heater plugged in. So um, he said the engine's in good shape. He was concerned, I think, that it was very hard to start, if it started at all, under 50 degrees. So uh, first off, I want to say I don't think there's anything wrong with this engine at all, but I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, why the older engines, and by older engines I mean non-common rail, don't start as well as the common rail engines do. Because there may be some folks out there that don't really understand uh, the reasons why. So uh, we'll start with what's called min-max specs. Every part in an engine that Cummins makes has a minimum allowed spec and a maximum allowed spec. And if those parts are not inside those specs, then they are to be discarded because they're not uh, quality enough for, to go back into serve, what they call service or a rebuild. So uh, back in the, the 70s and, eight, and early 80s when I worked at Cummins, if we had an engine that had a problem, especially with smoking or um, very hard starting, and the things that we could check back then were all in spec, we would call an engineer out. And the engineer would check some things, and sometimes they'd even have, even have us disassemble the engine, and he'd lay everything out and measure it. And so uh, the reason I brought that up is that engineer said to me, if you get an engine that has all the parts in it that are at minimum spec, or all the parts in it are at maximum spec, that's what we call a lemon because it just quite doesn't run right. Now, that was his opinion, but remember, that was back in probably 1981. So there was no common rail. There was not the precision in manufacturing that there is today. So uh, I never forgot what he told me because we did have customers that came in that we thought their, their engine was a lemon. Of course, you don't tell them but it just never ran right. And that was really interesting when, when he said that because sometimes after you'd overhaul that engine, if you put rods in it uh, and retimed everything, it ran pretty good. So there was some merit to what he said. So let's fast forward today to this ISX 871. Uh, it, I think it's an 871. A 2007 could be an 870 or an 871, but it really doesn't matter whether it's either one of those engines. So uh, what could cause, let's say you buy two of those engines and set them next to each other. What differences could cause one engine to start, say at 40 degrees, and the other one won't start unless it's 50? Now, the differences are going to be subtle, but I'm going to list some of the things that will cause that. Now, before I start listing things, I don't want you to go out and start taking engines apart or doing all these checks because if, if a, me a mechanical engine and an 870 and 871 are me old mechanical engines, yes, they have computers, but they have mechanical injectors that a rocker arm has to actuate, okay? Yes, solenoids allow fuel to go into the injector for timing and metering. But at the end of the day, a rocker arm pushes that plunger down to put the fuel in the cylinder. So on that engine, you've got, let's list the things that can affect starting quality in cold weather. The number one would be starter RPM. Cummins says usually when you're troubleshooting hard starting, they want to see a minimum of 140 to 150 RPM on the 870, 871. I've seen them start at 120 RPM. Uh, the faster the starter turns, the better off you are. Now, 
if you got an engine that's hard starting and you run out and put a new starter on it, it doesn't start any better. Well, I said earlier, don't start changing parts thinking things will get better. We're just talking about things that affect the starting. And some, some of these are very minute as far as their effect. And a bunch of them will add up to maybe that the engine starts better 15 degrees colder. I don't know that. Every, you know, each engine is its own entity as far as that goes. So uh, let's start at the top. We've got cam timing. The Usually on the um, ISX 871, 4 and 6 were the default cam timings. 4 in the injector. Uh, these are the wedges, the angle on the wedges. 4 degree angle on the wedges and 6 degree angle on the valves. And 6 was pretty standard on valves. And then uh, Cummins came out with a dial indicator method of timing the cam. And they actually did that to improve the after treatment on it. Not so much for starting. But it did have a minor effect on starting. We, uh, when I say we, the place I used to work, for the most part, we had, um, we had the four degree wedge, the six degree wedge. We also bought Cummins 4.25 and 4.5 degree wedge, which were called, which were considered precision wedges for accurate, accurate timing. And we would put the wedge, we'd do a four and a six, and then we use a dial indicator tool and check timing. It has to be a certain amount of thousands uh, in a window of thousands when the piston's in a certain place. And if that was off, then we would go ahead and put the four and a quarter wedge in, retime it, put it back together. And almost always we were inside that window on timing. Now all the engines that we worked on were the 600 horse uh, ISX um, 871s. So if you got a 450 or something else, with a different camshaft part number, what I'm what I'm saying may not always be true, but for us, if we use the four and a quarter wedge to time that engine's cams, every time we were in or close to the fast side of injector timing, when we use that dial indicator, I'm not sure that helped startability that much, but I think it did, and the reason I'll say. I didn't think it start that much. I'll explain that in a in a couple of minutes here. Um, the main purpose of that again was for after treatment to clean the engine up when it's running, and the engine seemed to pull better because it was uh, advancing the fuel just a little bit into the cylinder. Remember, the fuel goes in when the rocker arm comes down, when the cams on the high part of the lobe, right? So. Timing on the cams critical for uh, on that engine for uh, ignition timing. So uh, next, uh, when we're talking about cold weather, we're talking about you go out after a weekend. If it's twenty degrees outside, let's say forty degrees, the fuel in the head is forty degrees. The fuel in the injector is forty degrees. The injector plunger is forty degrees. The head's 40 degrees, the liners, you get, you get the idea. Everything is 40 degrees. So when you start cranking that engine, if it's cranking at the minimum allowed RPM, the piston goes up slower. Diesels are compression ignition, so it has to compress the air in the cylinder until it's hot enough to meet the flash point of the atomized diesel fuel. Notice I said atomized diesel fuel. When that injector rocker arm comes down, the fuel that's in the cup that's going to be injected has to be atomized. Now, if you have a set of injectors that have 500,000 miles on it and the spray holes are, are worn pretty bad, you can get poor atomization and that will affect your cold starting. The engine might smoke a lot more cranking, and then when it starts to hit, you'll have one cylinder that hits, and then finally it catches on, but there's a lot of smoke. Now, the thing is, you don't see the smoke unless you have an exhaust leak between the turbo 
and the after treatment because the after treatment catches all that smoke because the smoke is unburned fuel and that's what the DPF does. It catches unburned fuel. So uh, if, our, if our temperatures are cold there and we have slower cranking, then that can affect it. Also, if you have slower cranking, as you're making heat in that air, the air has more time to disperse its heat into the cold liner, the cold head, the cold top of the piston. So you're pulling the ignition heat out of the air as you're trying to warm the air up, okay? So I think you get the idea with that, with that part of it. Now the ISX 870, 871 do have timing actuators, okay? But they are not what I would call precision actuators by any stretch of the imagination. In other words, I don't think they're capable of deciding whether the fuel is going to be injected at 29 degrees before top dead center or 28. Maybe between 20, 25, 30, 35, but I don't think it's down to the degree because it's a mechanical system. Uh, the injector itself have a timing chamber. If you have losses in pressure there due to wear, that's going to change things. So the timing's really, if you're talking about precision, the timing's Injection timings all over the place on those mechanical engines when they're cranking. And so uh, as once we get the cylinder temperature we need, those things don't matter because we, we're going to be atomizing and burning the fuel. So uh, uh, the uh, person that, that uh, messaged me about this, you know, he said under 50, it doesn't want to start unless I plug it in. Well, what happens when you plug it in? While the water is at least 160 degrees, the liner is 160 degrees, the head's 160 degrees or close to it, the piston's pretty close to 160 degrees, so you don't have anything soaking the heat out of that air in the cylinder, okay, even though it's cold air going in there. So that's the mechanical engine, and that's the um, ignition side. Now, I didn't talk about fuel cetane ratings or anything like that, because really today, it's pretty standard. You know, back in the day, guys would, would mix number one with number two in the winter, and then in the summer, they run straight number two. Part of that was for starting. Um, if, they were out, if they were out at a rest stop someplace and they shut off over the weekend, that baby better start or they're stuck, right? And I did, back in the day, uh, when I was young, I did heavy-duty towing, and I did go tow a lot of guys out of rest stops to get them started. We'd hook up to it, lift the front of the truck off the air. That's back when he had big steel bumpers and just put that thing in low gear and pull it at four or five miles an hour all the way down the ramp till there was smoke rolling out of that stack and the driver would wave out the window because he kept pushing the clutch in to see when it would keep running. And we used to, I did that all the time in the very cold winters uh, up in Ohio. So, uh, yeah, a little history there. So let's fast forward to common rail. How come common rail will start at 10 degrees? We had a truck start at zero degrees at our shop. And I was actually amazed. And I went out to see if it would start. It sat over a weekend and it was it might have been it might have been five degrees. I don't know. It was a few years ago. But I wanted to see if it start. So I took the keys, went out there, and I cranked it. And it probably cranked for maybe eight seconds, and it fired. And so I was just amazed. Why does that happen? Well, there's a couple reasons. It doesn't crank really any faster. So we're not talking about making any changes in cylinder temperature. But we've got a common rail fuel system and the ECM won't start injecting fuel till somewhere between, I'm going to say, about six to 8,000 PSI. And I think when it's colder, it maybe waits a little bit longer to get that pressure up before it starts. Second, the common rail injector fires five times every power stroke. There's what's called a pre-burn warm-up a pre-burn, 
the main burn, the post main burn, and the cleanup burn. And the cleanups to keep what's coming out of the cylinder crystal clear. It's to burn all the rest of anything that didn't burn, make enough heat to burn it. Uh, so, the pre-burn, you're putting such a tiny amount of fuel in there, it's going to probably ignite because the flash point's going to be pretty low and it's going to be atomized way beyond mist because the smaller those particles are, the less heat it takes to bring them up to the temperature where they're going to ignite. So that's really the secret of the common rail system uh, with starting is it, it has those five different firing sequences on the injector to uh, heat the cylinder for good starting in cold weather. And remember on a common rail engine, there's just a, uh, a valve cam, valve and jake cam. It's the same thing, just the jakes have, there's an extra load for the jakes. And that's usually set at six degrees. So that didn't change at all. And all of the ignition timing is done by the ECM. It looks at the uh, ambient air temperature, the altitude. It looks at the um, fuel temperature. And I'm not sure if it looks at oil temperature, but it does look at water temperature. And then it times that engine to whatever the software limits are that it needs to for starting. Okay, so uh, that's my little ditty on, on starting cold weather with the new engines. And by the way, we did plug in our common rail engines because why put all that stress load on the starters and everything else if you don't have to, right? So we always had uh, at least block heaters on the trucks and the ones that ran up in Canada in the extreme cold, we had um, heaters in the oil pans and the blocks on those. And sometimes a transmission too. So, okay, uh, I talked enough about this. Thanks for joining me in Edge and Shop Joe. See you next time.